All right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Simulation IQ. Uh, we're going to be covering some simulation mechanical information today. Uh, the topic is material database management and importing from simulation composites. Uh, my name is Dean Rose, and with me today I have Andrew Sartorelli. Uh, we are both product support specialists here at Autodesk. And a little history on some of the webinars we've done before. Uh, I'm sure many of you have attended these, so this will be a, a quick review of where we've been and uh, how we announced these. So we've done some weld analyses, a uh, webinar on uh, mechanical event simulation, uh, what's new in Simulation Mechanical 2015. We've also uh, discussed NASTRAN NCAD and tips and tricks of meshing. And these are all viewable on YouTube, so if you want to go back and, and take a look at some of the topics we've covered, if you have any questions, uh, you can jump on there and view those. Uh, it's on the Autodesk Sim360 channel. And if you're looking for updates on the webinars that are coming, uh, you can check out the Simulation Mechanical Forum. Uh, we also post to LinkedIn. Uh, direct emails. Uh, I'm sure some of you are getting those. Uh, those will have some announcements coming out and some reminders. In addition, we do some uh, tweets at Autodesk Simulation and the Facebook Autodesk Simulation page. So that's some areas where you can go to get some information. And down on the bottom of the slides here, you'll see a link where you can go and download any of the information that we go over in this webinar. All right, uh, just a quick update on some, some Autodesk simulation news. I wanted to spread the word about the beta program that we have for 2016. This is just a, a preview of the upcoming releases that we have. And you can see we have simulation mechanical here, uh, simulation CFD, some NASTRAN, products, simulation mold flow, uh, one of the composite products that we'll be talking about later in this webinar, and a new uh, Sim Studio project that's formerly known as Project Arrow. So you can go to beta.autodesk.com and sign up and get access to those uh, pieces of software. And here is a list of uh, URL links in case you have any questions about some of the uh, more commonly asked items that we've gone through. Uh, if you download this webinar uh, PDF, you'll be able to click on these links and go to some of this information. And it gives you the uh, KCS article uh, that we're generating. And it'll give you the latest up-to-date information that we have on some of these issues. All right, and now we'll be getting into today's agenda. I'm going to pass this over to Andrew Sartorelli, and he's going to discuss uh, some of the information about Material Library Manager. All right, Andrew. Thanks, Dean. Good morning, everyone. Um, I just want to welcome you all to this uh, presentation. Today we're going to be going over uh, the Material Library Manager as well as uh, simulation composite design and um, how to um, export materials from that product and bring them into um, simulation mechanical as well as, as, well as other FEA products. Um, so how do you access the material library manager? This is kind of a common question we get from customers. They want to add their own materials to uh, a custom library. Um, so it's accessible through the, uh, the tools tab on the ribbon. Um, there's a, a button there that you'll see that says manage material library. Uh, just click on that and that's going to bring up the uh, Material Library Manager. Now it's also accessible um, as a kind of standalone uh, application if you need to for some reason. And it's going to be located in your program files directory um, and simulation 2015 and then um, mlibmgr.exe. Um, um, and if you open that up, that'll just open up the Material Library Manager. Um, so, you know, one important thing to remember about the Material Library Manager as well is that the default material libraries are not editable. 
Um, so you're not going to be able to edit the Autodesk Simulation Material Library and Simulation uh, Plastic Library. Um, and those are the two uh, material libraries that are included uh, by default. Um, so by default we have this Autodesk Simulation Material Library Manager, or excuse me, Material Library that includes um, you know, linear uh, elastic uh, materials, orthotropic materials like wood, uh, we have a, a large selection of wood materials there. Uh, and then a common one we get asked for a lot is a uh, hyperelastic material. So we have a, a rubber uh, Mooney Rivlin material there. Um, and then um, sometimes you're doing a, you know, a nonlinear analysis and you're looking at plastic, um, plastic uh, deformation. So we have uh, some of our steel uh, material models include um, plastic with, um, so von Mises with isotropic hardening or kinematic hardening. Um, as well as we have some soils in that library. And then the other default library is going to be um, the simulation plastics library. Uh, so the most of that data comes from our uh, simulation Moleplow product. Um, and that typically is a thermoplastic material model. And those are going to be grouped by uh, company and not necessarily by the, uh, the type of polymer it is. Um, so you might be looking uh, you know, for a specific uh, group of polymer, um, but really um, everything is grouped by the, the company, um, so you need to find that um, proprietary product name and then search by the company there. Um, so some of the things that aren't included um, in our standard uh, material library, um, temperature dependent material properties. Um, so if you're looking to do a, a transient thermal analysis or maybe a, an MES analysis with um, you know, some thermal loading added in there, um, we don't have, um, by default, uh, materials that include uh, material properties that depend on temperature. So you'll see, um, we'll have some materials with, uh, you know, alpha's coefficients of expan thermal expansion, um, but we won't have materials in there that have those properties at, at different um, temperature values. Um, we don't include, by default, um, foam materials, so uh, something like a hyperfoam and uh, we do not have um, electrical, so something like a piezoelectric uh, material, those aren't included. Um, that's you know, the responsibility of uh, the user to enter that information. Um, so obviously, if you're poking around in the material library manager, uh, you want to know how to add your own material. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, it's not possible to add a material um, to one of the default libraries. You actually have to go in and create your own um, custom library. Um, so you go to the new uh, button at the top of the material library manager, you'll see there on the right. Um, and then I'll give you the option to um, enter a name. Uh, so you could type in, you know, here you see I've done a test. Um, so you could do my library or something like that, or if it's your company, uh, company material library. Uh, and then save that .mlb file. Uh, I also ask you to enter a description, and now that material library is actually going to be found on the the bottom tab there of the um, material library manager. Um, so you'll see that as you add, you know, different libraries, you're going to um, have additional tabs there. And one great feature is that you're actually able to copy over materials from the um, standard libraries, the default libraries, over to this test one. So if you're using ASTM A36 steel, uh, but you want to modify the material properties slightly, you can copy that over from the default library um, and then move that to your, your um, custom defined library to allow you to enter in those uh, specific properties that you're interested in. Um, Another common question we get is adding hyperelastic materials. So a lot of people now are doing, um, you know, rubbers and things like that in their nonlinear analysis. Um, so we have one rubber material that we provide by default, but this may not capture the, um, you know, the material that's in your, um, you know, your prototype um, accurately. So it's important that maybe you go in and you add your own. So you'll send out that material to a testing lab, but now how do you get that data into simulation mechanical? Um, so if you edit a or add a new custom material for um, typically, you know, we'll see a, a Mooney Rivlin for a hyperelastic material. You'll see on the uh, right hand side of the element material specifications window, there's an option for curve fit. 
Um, if you click that curve fit option, it's going to bring up um, a new window, and that window is going to give you options to enter tabular data for uh, simple tension, uh, equibiaxial, here shear, and volumetric. And uh, if we go to the next slide here, we'll see that we can actually import um, CSV files, so your material testing lab uh, may provide you with some of this data in this uh, CSV format, um, and you can import that into um, the curve fit utility. Um, so you see on the, the left hand side we've got some of that uh, stress strain data that we've imported and then um, we'll see in the right hand side that um, before we perform, perform a curve fit we'll actually see red dots there and that, those are the points that were imported from the CSV file. Um, we can actually cycle through each of the um, tabular data inputs um, by using the drop down there and that would cycle through if you want to look at your pure shear or your um, equibiaxial, something like that, um, to allow you to, to view that uh, data. And then we have the option to perform a two constant, five constant, or nine constant uh, high order uh, curve fit. Um, so you would select the, uh, the option on the uh, right hand corner there, the order of the model. You would select the um, data that you would like to include in this. So in this case, I had three um, CSV files here for simple tension, pure shear, and equibiaxial. Um, so I included that information, and then I performed the curve fit on that material data. Um, so you may need to use a higher order depending on um, you know, what the data actually looks like. In this case, I tried a, a second order and a, a five order uh, constant, and uh, both of those did not uh, appropriately capture the curves that I was seeing um, or expecting with the, the data here. Uh, so with the ninth order fit, and that's the blue line that you can see here uh, is the fitted curve. And once you perform that curve fit, um, you'll actually have this data, um, you'll have the, the constants generated. So on the, the upper right hand side, we can see uh, C10, C01, et cetera, uh, gets populated after this curve fit. Now if we go uh, to the next slide here, we'll see that that data now carries over um, from uh, the curve fit there into um, the material library and it's going to populate those values there. Uh, so we would click OK, that would uh, you know, save that material information uh, for this uh, material. Now it's important to remember that for a hyperelastic material Mooney Rivlin, um, we need at minimum simple tension and equally, equibiaxial. Um, it's important that you understand that that's a minimum. If your um, material is undergoing some different types of, um, you know, loading there, that you know these equibiaxial and simple tension are not going to really capture the true um, true aspects of the material. It may be important to include that volumetric as well as pure shear data to get accurate results in your simulation. I'd say if, if you're going to spend the money to send out a material, a hyperelastic material to get tested by a material lab, to get all four tests done to make sure that you have complete and accurate information here. Um, and then, as I mentioned, it's going to populate these constants back into the material library uh, so it can easily save out after performing that curve fit. Um, so now I'm going to pass it back over to uh, Dean Rose here to talk a little bit about our uh, composite design product and how that's going to work with Simulation Mechanical. All right, great. Thanks, Andrew. Andrew covered some of the basic material library functionality, and now we're going to explore some of the options we have for importing material properties uh, from other platforms. One such platform is Autodesk Simulation Composite Design. Composite Design is a software tool that provides detailed information about composites you can use to streamline composite manufacturing and composite related engineering processes. The software contains default libraries as well as the ability to quickly create and save your own customizable materials. These materials can then be exported to FEA platforms for for further use in advanced analyses. So this is just a small peek into composite design. Let's take a look and see some of these features in action. So now we want to export data with composite design. Composite design comes with a list of default materials 
and we can use one of those today to export into a simulation mechanical verification example. You can see that composite design has the capability of exporting engineering constants as well as anisotropic material data to FEA platforms such as Abacus, ANSYS, various NASTRAN platforms, and of course simulation mechanical. Composite design can be a valuable tool for those of you wanting an easy way to transfer material data between platforms. And before I go too far into the example, I just want to uh, bring up a known issue that we have, and it deals with directly exporting materials from composite design to simulation mechanical. And uh, right now, it's exporting the, the data in the wrong unit set, so we have our development team working on a fix for that. Um, but I'll go through uh, an easy workaround for this so you can walk through um, and see how to resolve this issue if you experience it. All right, so I'm going to go through a quick demo of exporting the data, uh, viewing the data within simulation composite design, exporting that from composite design, importing it into simulation mechanical, and then running an analysis and viewing the results to see how we compare against a verification example. So now we're in the simulation composite design environment. And what you'll see here on the left is a number of materials that are uh, come pre-populated in the data tree. Uh, you can use a default material if you uh, don't know all the properties. These come pre-populated uh, with all of your elastic constants, some coefficient of thermal expansion values, as well as strengths. So uh, sometimes when you're given material data, you, you aren't giving, given all of the information. So Composite design is a great tool uh, and it comes with pre-populated with some of this material data. You also have the capability of creating your own lamina. Uh, you can directly input the lamina data uh, using test data that you have. Or if you know the fiber and matrix materials that you're using, you can also create one using a micromechanics model that we have. And what we'll be doing today is exporting lamina data for use in the simulation mechanical problem. Uh, you can also export laminate data. So uh, let's go into that. You'll find the export material uh, module up here in underneath the utilities menu. Go down to export material. And here you'll be given a couple of options of what to export as far as lamina or laminate. Uh, by default, it, it is selected to lamina. We'll go ahead and select the material that we want to export. Uh, we're going to do an ultra-high modulus uh, graphite material. And we want to know how to export, so we'll go ahead and choose the FEA platform we intend to to export to, and here you see Autodesk Simulation Mechanical listed. We'll select that. And for the thin composite uh, element definition that we have, we're going to want to export with engineering constants. And you can select Show Output, and this is going to just give you a, a window that has all the XML data. Um, nothing really to do here other than write to a new file. And here we'll see uh, it's going to give you the area we want to save that material. I've already gone through this uh, a few times, so we'll go ahead and select this and just overwrite an existing XML. It'll ask us if we want to replace it. Say yes. And now we're done. We've exported that material. So now what we're going to do is go into simulation mechanical and import that material and use it in our analysis.
All right, we're in simulation mechanical now. And what I've done here, uh, AVE 40 in the verification packet uh, for simulation mechanical has a uh, natural frequency thin composite element uh, model that's being verified. And what we can do, I've just opened up the archive in simulation mechanical, uh, click run simulation. And here we have a set of results. And within the verification example, it gives some, some validation data as far as what we're looking for for frequencies and things like that. So um, this is with a customized material that was used. And we could see here in the element definition, uh, we have general. And then our laminate tab is where we'll define the composite laminate stacking sequence. And underneath material, we can see here we have customer defined. I'll go ahead and open this up so we can see what that looks like. And we can see here some of our material properties. These were manually input. And they're very close to the ultra high modulus uh, material that we have listed in composite design. So instead of just uh, creating a material and manually inputted those, I wanted to uh, highlight uh, the possibilities that you have. So we'll cancel out of here. And what I've done is I went ahead, uh, copied this design scenario. Now we'll leave the original here and we'll work with a copy so uh, we can make changes and compare against the validation data that we have. And inside here, if you want to change the, oh, first we'll go to the importing the material. Go to Tools tab, select your Manage Material Library, and it'll bring up your Material Library Manager dialog box. So by default, we see our Autodesk Simulation Material Library. We also have a Plastics Library. And I have a custom webinar demo library that I've created beforehand. Uh, this contains that ultra-high modulus graphite that we exported from Composite Design. So what I'll do to show you how to do that, we'll go ahead and create a new material library. And we'll just call this Web Demo. We'll save that. It's going to ask us to create a unique description. It populates with the name uh, for, for the intents and purposes of today's demonstration. I'll go ahead and leave that. So now we have our web demo library available. You'll see a small drop down arrow. Select that. Select import XML. And now we can navigate to the area where our XML file is stored. So as you can remember, uh, we have a UM Graphite XML. We'll go ahead and select that, click Open. It's going to give us some verification that we've successfully imported this file. So we'll click OK. Now under General, we have our material listed here. Now you can see the material coefficients, uh, modulus of elasticity, some Poisson values, thermal expansion values, as well as the shear modulus of elasticity. So now that we've imported this material, we'll go ahead and close this. Um, if also, uh, in addition to the uh, limitation I uh, brought up earlier, you have the ability of going in here and modifying these material inputs. So if we wanted to, uh, we could go in and just change the values to something like that. When we select on a new box, it's going to ask us to save the changes. We can go ahead and do that. And it will change these data, uh, save these changes to our library. So uh, if you are importing, uh, you'll want to add a uh, e to the 6 to these values, and that will update the value to the appropriate um, 
indication. Uh, so uh, you can use that in your analyses. Otherwise, these stiffnesses are going to be slightly low, and uh, especially for doing a frequency analysis, you're going to get some uh, deformation, unexpected deformations. So uh, that's an important thing to remember until we get that resolved. So we've added the material. Now let's go into our element definition. And we're going to select this. And you can see I've copied this over so it's, it's still retaining the customer defined information. And just select that material box. And we see the element material selection window populates. And we see our webinar demo. And underneath general we see the UM graphite epoxy that we've created. We can go ahead and select OK. Uh, you also have the option to edit properties here, uh, but you don't have quite the capabilities of managing the material library here as you do in the material library manager dialog. So that's important to remember. We get a lot of questions regarding that. Um, just, just note that you can only change the properties. Uh, you can't add materials, delete materials, things like that. So click OK. It's going to ask us, are we sure? Sure we are. And you'll see here that we have this uh, material listed in our menu now. And you can see we have nine of these. So uh, for the sake of demonstration, I won't put you through the pain of, of walking through every single one of those. We'll go ahead and click OK. That'll save those element definitions. And we'll go to this design scenario two that I've created beforehand. And we'll go into this laminate tab. And through the magic of television, you can see that we have all these uh, indexes populated with the appropriate material. So we can click OK. Uh, one additional feature, if you're working with composites, you can also use some import-export functionality. And this uses a CSV file that has some of this information inside of it. And you can import that and quickly update a laminate, uh, something that's probably very convenient if you're using 24 or 48 plies in your analysis. We'll go ahead and click OK. And now we'll run through the simulation and take a look at our results. And you can see here, I've ran this analysis before, but using the default material from simulation composite design that closely matched the uh, verification inputs listed in the verification example packet, uh, you can see that we're extremely close to the output. And in conclusion, you can see uh, this was AVE 40 from the verification examples. And using the default composite design material uh, with very similar properties, we were able to uh, mimic, closely mimic the verification example and get the uh, very close results. Here you can see the theoretical results that were calculated. And this is with using some direct inputs uh, from into simulation mechanical, uh, the percent differences. And here is using an analysis with the simulation composite design material and some of those frequencies that are listed. And you can see we're within 2% on those values. So uh, we could easily go back and modify those if, if we know the material properties. Uh, we can change those and uh, bring those closer to the theoretical results. So uh, just one way you can import materials into composite or in, from composite design into simulation mechanical. And I was interested in knowing if uh, any of you users out there were importing material data from non-Autodesk sources. I'm going to launch a poll here, and if you have the opportunity, uh, go ahead and select 
if, if you import any material data from another source. And it is not looking like anybody uses this functionality, but if you do, uh, you can visit this uh, webinar and see how to do that. And you can also visit the online help documentation as well, and that will cover a lot of that information. All right. And next, I wanted to. So I think see our if next uh, poll question here. Yep, our next poll question is going to be: um, you know, do any of you perform uh, composite design work on your current projects here? All right, it's looking like most of you are not using composites. Uh, this was just a composite example that we made up. Um, you can also use this for uh, just creating and, and modifying your own material libraries. So it doesn't have to be specific to composites, but uh, this is one option that you have. And now um, this is the end of our presentation, so we'll go into some question and answer and see uh, what's being asked here and we'll try to answer your questions live and if we can't get to your questions or we don't have an answer at this time we'll try to respond uh, to you directly at a later time so and I see one question that we have Can you please check the micros? And if you have any questions, feel free to go ahead and, and put those into the, uh, the question section. And we'll either have someone answer those through there, or I can read out the answer. Oh, okay. I think that uh, question had to deal with the microphone, so I, I hope everyone was able to hear fine. So we just got a, a question in Dean. Um, what is a good source for material models without resorting to experimentation? Um, I think one of the ones that we go to a lot um, is MatWeb. Um, so MatWeb.com has a lot of great information, a lot of uh, different material types there. Um, they're not going to be um, some of the more complex ones like a hyperelastic material or uh, a thermoelastic, you probably won't find that on MatWeb. Um, but that would be my, uh, my first stop when, when looking for a material model. I don't know if you have any thoughts on that, Dean. Yeah, there's a, uh, if you're looking for plastic data, the MoldFlow database obviously has a lot of information. Uh, there's also a company called IDES. I think their website is like ides.com or, uh, or Underwriters Lab, something like that. Um, they have a lot of plastics information. Uh, there's also a prospector database that they have that contains a lot of composite information. Um, if you're looking for composite information, uh, there's also uh, Granta, which has some material data and that's available, uh, but as Andrew mentioned, uh, MatWeb's a great resource for getting some of those experimental values. You can also contact the manufacturer where you're buying the material from. Uh, they'll provide you some, some specs on the data that they have. And just keep in mind, uh, a lot of the, the information that they're providing isn't quite as accurate as, as some of the uh, uh, testing data. Uh, that's available, so um, it may not include all of the data points that you're looking for in order to do an analysis, so um, sometimes we get questions as far as um, I'm, I'm missing a, a certain value, what can I do to just calculate that? And you get into a very gray area where um, 
these material values are kind of the foundation of your analysis. So if you're not using good, accurate material test data, um, where is that going to lead you as far as your accuracy in the analysis? Uh, just something important to consider. Uh, there's a number of things you can, you can do um, if you want to go ahead and use some engineering judgment and calculate those on your own. Um, that, that's completely up to the user though. So um, if you do have questions about that, uh, you can contact support. Uh, we'll do our best to help you out. Uh, we can't advise on material data that, to use, uh, but we can point you in the right direction. And I see another question. Um, so Aaron has a question here. Um, Aaron's wondering, um, is Composite 2015 available for download uh, from the subscription center? Um, so if you have a license for uh, composite design or uh, composite um, analysis, those uh, should both be available on the uh, subscription center for download. And I believe uh, composite analysis just had a uh, mid-year release, um, so that will be available as well on the subscription center. And we have another question, uh, or maybe a, a comment. Getting correct material data is, at this point, the most challenging aspect of simulation for me. And we do get this a lot, um, especially for myself working on composites. Composite manufacturers often um, give you in-plane data, but they don't give you a lot of out-of-plane data for uh, engineering constants, elastic constants, or uh, strength data. So um, that is uh, a big challenge, and uh, the best thing I can do to, to alleviate that, um, studying research papers that are available. Uh, sometimes those give uh, a lot more in-depth data sets that have been tested um, within different uh, material labs. So that's a great resource you have as well. I think SAGE publications. Um, some ASME publications also have information, so um, a few areas you can look for more material data. So it looks like we've uh, we've run out of uh, questions here. So if you have any any thoughts, you know, maybe not necessarily uh, related to the topics that we cover today, but maybe about simulation mechanical or um, simulation composite products, um, certainly don't hesitate to ask those as well in the uh, the question box. All right, we'll stay on here for about another minute, and then I think uh, go ahead and send your questions in. And while we're waiting for questions, I just want to thank everybody for, for coming to the webinar today. And I understand between the holidays, it's a busy period for everyone. So I really appreciate having the opportunity to get this infor information out to everyone. So it looks like the stream of questions has kind of uh, dried up here. So uh, at this point, we'll, uh, we'll end the webinar, and we look forward to uh, seeing you all again in our, our next series with Simulation Mechanical. Uh, next week will be a, a presentation uh, by Dean Rose here about uh, simulation composite uh, products. Um, but we'll see you after the new year for another one of Simulation Mechanical.